welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about the products that I've been using to take care for um, the puppies as well as, you know, their mom and just everything that I've been using that you guys have been seeing in the videos. I have been getting some comments of people asking, um, you know, where I got that or what is that. So I thought today would be a good day to go over everything that, you know, I've been using for the past two months, like the major stuff. I'm sure some of you are tired of hearing about the puppies, but um, everything's actually going to go back to normal on this channel starting in February. So it's not going to just be so focused on the puppies, it's going to incorporate all of the other animals as well. Uh, so if you do have requests for which animals you want to see more of or learn more about, be sure to write that down below in the comments. So the first thing is the play yard. Now the play yard is the um, thing that's actually made for human babies. That's like a little basket and it's for the toddlers and small babies to be able to play in safely. Uh, so I found online that that's mostly referred to as a play yard. I'm sure there's other names for it as well. Um, that one I actually got used and I felt like it was the perfect size for Luna to have her puppies in. And it was really great also because it's, it's off the floor so it's kind of like a little um, hammock type thing. And it supported her weight so well. She was so, so big. Um, you know, she gave birth to 10 puppies. So she was just really big and always uncomfortable. And even before she had the puppies, I started letting her sleep in there most of the time. Um, so that she was more comfortable. So that was perfect for her. I really liked it for my corgi. Now I'm sure it's not going to work for all breeds, but um, I think medium small, small breeds, that works pretty well. Larger breeds, you're more concerned with them laying on their puppies, so there are different things to keep them in when the puppies are very small, but I liked this for Luna. Now the second thing is the milk replacer, the Espelac milk. Now if your dog is going to have puppies, you want to have this on hand. Now the reason you need it is not just to feed them in case they do need to be bottle fed, but to give the mother. It's a great thing to actually put into her food. And it helps Luna out a lot. She wasn't producing a whole lot of milk in the beginning, and just adding that to her food really helped her and she started producing more milk and it provides a lot of calcium for her. Now she is on a raw diet so she doesn't eat puppy food the way that she would you know, normally feed a pregnant dog or a dog that has a litter. Uh, she had a different diet but the Espelac milk was included in her diet. Now this Espelac milk can also be given to the puppies of course so if you do end up having to bottle feed that's a great brand to use. And then once they start actually eating solid food, this is perfect to mix into their food. And I mix this into their food probably for um, like two or three weeks until they were just completely on puppy food. Now, if you remember, Luna lost a lot of weight by having all of these puppies. I mean, it's hard on the body, so it's expected that she will lose weight and there were just so many of them. And she was a kind of skinny dog to start off with. She just uh, has never really put on weight too much, but it is of course better for the dog to be a little skinny than to be overweight. That causes more complications with the pregnancy. So she did lose a little bit of weight and she was, you know, being fed a ton. Just uh, felt like it was a black hole. Um, and she uh, was getting a calorie booster. So the calorie booster I was using is this as the GNC and so you just squirt a little bit into their food every day. So she was getting that on top of, you know, her tons and tons of food. And so she actually started putting on weight after the puppies were born and then once the puppies stopped nursing, she's, you know, still actually on this and she's been putting on weight a lot easier, so she's getting better in that aspect. But uh, that's a really good thing to have on hand for your female dog, or you know, really any dog that is having a very hard time with putting on weight, you can try that. Now, the next thing, I've gotten a lot of questions about the playpen that I used for the puppies once they moved out of the play yard. So this one is actually just a little fenced in area where it was on the floor and I put the puppy pads underneath it. So here's an example of me cleaning it um, and you know moving it around. It, this is such a neat pen. It is super easy to put together. It actually just kind of um, fits in together. It also folds in half if you want to just move it to the side for cleaning. If you want to take it apart completely, you just um, pull up one of the bars and then you know it'll all come undone. This play pen is really, really neat and the price for it was amazing. It's about $30 on Amazon. I'll put the link to it down below. I really liked this pen and I expect that I'm going to be using it for other animals in the future. 
Also, you can buy multiple ones. So if you want to order two or three, they'll all fit together and you can make one giant pen. In fact, I actually think this is going to be a really cool pen for a rabbit. So that's something I might use it for in the future. Now items five and six is actually the puppy pads. So I used two different brands for the puppy pads this time and it was actually mostly because um, I bought a lot of the stuff for them on Black Friday before they were even born and I bought puppy pads at one place and then I went to another place and they had them on sale and I was like, oh, I think this one's better. So I bought those ones and then I was going to return the first ones but then um, I never got around to it and she ended up having, you know, the nine puppies so I was like, I'm probably gonna need this and I just ended up keeping all of them. So the first ones that I used are, I think the ones that, um, I think it's a PetSmart brand, it's Top Paw. And so that one, the pads were really big and they actually had the stickies underneath them so you could peel it off and then stick it to the floor if you have tile. And that actually worked really well. They actually did stick to the floor. As long as you just made sure to actually press on it pretty good, then it did stick on the floor. So I really liked that about them and they were pretty big. And for the price, it was amazing. Now the other ones that I used were more expensive. These ones were smaller, but they are more absorbent. So they were actually thicker, could take more urine. And that, the second one was the Wee Wee Pads from Petco. And I think this one you can get pretty much online or just anywhere. It's not like a Petco brand. These ones were smaller, um, but pretty much for both pads, it takes about four to cover the whole playpen if you just have one playpen. Now with the PetSmart brand, those ones left a significant amount. So if you wanted to um, have, you know, it sticking out from the playpen, there was a good amount sticking out from it. Now the Wee Wee pads were a lot smaller, so four just left about two inches outside of the, um, the whole playpen. So which ones did I like more? I'm gonna have to say that I liked the PetSmart brand more. Now, some of the cons were is that it did not absorb as much as the Wee Wee pads. Just the fact that it had the stickies on the opposite side to stick, to stick to the floor was pretty good and it worked really, really well for me. It For me, it worked better than the Wee Wee pads, but if you don't have a small dog, then you might wanna go with the Wee Wee pads just because it did hold more urine. But I didn't really like the size of the Wee Wee pads for the price. Now, the other thing that I used when I was using the pads underneath the playpen is I put a fleece blanket inside the pen for the puppies. And this was just something that's really easy to wash and gives them a nice place to lay down. I am not actually a big fan of dog beds. I don't like dog beds because they're very hard to clean. And I used to use dog beds, but now all of my animals get blankets to sleep on. And it's just that it's easier to put the blankets in the washer. Um, I just it felt like I could never get a bad smell out of the dog beds. And so now I'm just always using blankets for everyone. So the fleece blankets were warm. It gave them a little comfy area to sleep in. Some of them have kind of learned to you know, go on the pad and not their blanket. Others are still going on the whole thing, but it's easy to clean, so that was a good thing. Now to clean the whole area where the puppies were, I used uh, Simple Green. Now it's this spray here, so I'll link down to it be uh, below. I got this at Home Depot, and this is actually something that I put into my pressure washer when I wash all of the cages outside. And it's really great because it's environmentally friendly, it's non-toxic, and of course everything dries before you know you put the animal back in but it's something that's safe to use around animals. So I really liked that for cleaning the floor and just kind of getting the smell and everything off. And in case the puppy pads moved and they got something on the tile, I was able to clean it with that and some paper towels. Now here is the puppy food that I have been using for these guys. Now my dogs are on a raw diet, but um, we had nine puppies and not all of these puppies are going to be on a raw diet when they do go to their uh, new homes. And at first it had been my idea like, oh, well, I'll keep the ones that I'm keeping on a raw diet. I'll start them out that way. Um, but with so many, it was gonna be really hard for me to do that. And I decided to just put everybody on kibble and then I'll transition mine, you know, once um, they're the only ones left in the house, once the others go to their new homes. So this is the type of food that I was using. It's like non-GMO, uh, no corn, no soy, no wheat. Uh, really, really good food and they've been doing great on it. 
at first I would soak it in water, get it really soft, and then later on I started giving it to them more a heart. And now um, they're seven weeks and they're eating the solid food without any water on it. And just a reminder, if you do have a puppy, make sure you're giving it uh, the dry kibble. Don't put it on canned food. Uh, that just gives them diarrhea. It's not good for them. They lose a lot of nutrients. Uh, so they need to eat solid food. When they get a little bit older, you can start giving them some canned food. But of course, the best diet is going to be a raw diet for them. Okay, so this toy's a little dirty. They've been using it. Uh, but the toys I wanted to talk to you guys about are the Puppies Are Us brand. Uh, so this can be found in PetSmart, and these are the toys that I've been using for them. Um, this one was like tied together, but uh, <laughs> anyways, these are for puppies that are teething. It gives them a lot of different textures. It has all these like little grooves here, and it helps the puppies that are having their teeth grow in, and it's you know constantly hurting them. So I've been using all of this for them, and that's the Puppies Are Us brands at PetSmart. Now the other toys that I've been using for them are the Star Wars toys from Petco, and that was more just like my personal preference. The Star Wars toys were on sale on Black Friday, so I bought a bunch of them that day. Uh, and I, I like those. They actually do like them and they've been playing with them a lot. So those ones were good for them as well. But the teething toys, I think, were like the most important ones. Like that's probably the most important ones that you can get for your puppy. So there's some that aren't safe, um, but I noticed that pretty much all the ones that were the Puppies R Us brand um, were really good toys and it wasn't like the kind that they end up eating or anything like that. But just make sure that you do get the right size toy for the puppy that you do have. Now lastly, I've also been using baby gates in the house for the puppies, especially when I want to keep them in a certain room or something like that. And the baby gates are really cheap, like $5 gates from Walmart. So those work great for them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped you guys if you've been wondering what type of products I've been using for the puppies. If you are new here, don't forget forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!